Hello everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I am going to simulate double pipe heat exchanger. Here is the geometry. You can see one fluid is flowing at the center of this heat exchanger and the other fluid is flowing on the shell side of this heat exchanger. If I hide this uh, fluid, um, you can see these are all solid walls. I have also created some baffles to create the turbulence on the shell side. Let's start with the meshing of this geometry. I have transported geometry to the meshing module. Whenever I start meshing, I always create default mesh just to see how it looks like. Generate mesh and you can see our default mesh. Now we can play around with different parameters. First of all, in solid, you don't need to have very fine mesh. Let's start with the default parameters element size. We have 17.6. It is the biggest element. Let's uh, go down to 2 millimeter and see what we get. Generate mesh. Still, it is too big. Actually, the wall thickness of this body is 1 millimeter. Uh, I want to have two elements on here. So I think. Uh, 0.5 makes sense if uh, I generate mesh now and then we will see how many elements we will get okay the mesh look good on the solid side I have two elements in the wall that should be enough for the heat transfer but on the liquid side I would like to have more refined mesh for that I can go into the mesh insert sizing and I can select this body and I can give element size so instead of 0 0.5 I'll give here 0 0.4 and similarly I do the same for the other body sizing and I am doing body sizing select this body here and element size 0 0.4 and now let's see what we get okay now mesh looks fine now I want to add inflation layers on both of the liquid side. For that let me hide this geometry, select this geometry and say hide. Uh, for that I am going to create some name selection. Name selection is good to use in the meshing module for different kind of parameters. So I selected surface and uh, let me call it, I am pressing N just to get this window. I am calling it inflation inner. Let me hide this body, select this one and say hide body. You can press F9 to hide this one as well. And I also want to create uh, inflation on this side. So therefore I am going to select all these surfaces. Okay, I have selected all these surfaces and I am going to press N and I can call it inflation outer. I can also create inflation on the outer side but actually it is not that important it's up to you if you want to have a better accuracy you can create but i think for this uh, simulation it is fine let's add inflation insert inflation first of all let's show, show all bodies i want to create inflation on this body so it says geometry selection i am going to select this geometry Inflation you need two parameters here. You have to select geometry and in the geometry selection You have to select your corresponding surface here. You want to create your inflation So I am using name selection because I have created name. I can say inflation inner similarly And on both sides, I'm going to create eight number of layers and I am using smooth transition, it should be fine. Generate mesh. It has converted to tetrahedral mesh. We can revert back. There is only one way of doing that in this uh, ANSYS meshing. We have to insert a method. Method and because this geometry is pretty straightforward, so we can use multi zone meshing. Normally, multi-zone meshing does not work on complex geometry. Multi-zone create the hexa mesh. So, whenever it is possible, we should try to create hexa mesh because it helps us 
to reduce the number of elements. And you can see we got our hexamesh pad. Because I have been selected only half of the geometry, we have to create symmetry on the right side. So, mm -hmm, here, insert symmetry. I have created symmetry. Now I can select my symmetry region. For that, select surface, this surface, this surface, this, and this, and this as well. All these are symmetry planes. So we have five symmetry planes. Now we can create uh, inlet and outlet. I want to have a counter current flow. Uh, here I am saying hot inlet because on the outer side I want to have hot fluid and on the inner, inner side I want to have cold fluid so I am just creating corresponding name so that it would be easier over there. We have created our mesh, we have created names, we have selected a symmetry plane and one thing has left that is connection region. Here if you see we have three connection region. So let's check it is creating fluid outer walls here. So fluid outer and fluid inner. It is creating a contact region between two fluids. But if we look at our geometry there is no contact between this fluid and this fluid, but it is creating over here. So I am going to delete all these contacts. Actually, I have created a video to correctly create the context. You can check that video. For quick, go to context, set sliding bar to 70, and then say create automatic context. Now it has created two contacts. As a matter of fact, we have only two contacts between outer fluid and the wall and the inner fluid and walls. We can move to the fluent. I have imported geometry to fluent. The number of element of our geometry I did not check in the ANSYS machine. Let's check over here if we could get. It does not show total number of element. We can convert our tetrahedral mesh into polyhedra over here and it will reduce our number of elements significantly. Simply click over here and it will convert our mesh into polyhedral mesh. It is converting and you can see the total number of elements. These are now 1.3 million. For it was in the range of 5 or 6 million. It has converted. I can show you the geometry. Go to graphics, mesh, new, select all of your element, face and edges and save display. It will show you the geometry and uh, you can see the tetrahedral elements have been converted into polyhedral. So it converts only tetrahedral, the hexa element will remain as it is. Now we will go through all these steps one by one to define our Simulation setup. I want to do steady state simulation pressure based model. We need energy equation and I am going to use K epsilon activate energy equation because we are doing heat transfer simulation. Then to the next material fluid we have here. We want to define two fluid. One is water because we will be using liquid water as our cooling media so copy and another one on the other side i am using kerosene that we want to cool down kerosene not vapor but liquid copy okay and close the solid i would keep as aluminium because uh, heat exchanger you can find of aluminium we have our material then cell zone condition liquid okay i have given name the inner fluid is this one and the outer fluid is this one so inner fluid we want to have water i will select water liquid apply close and outer fluid we want to have as a kerosene liquid and i want to change my unit for temperature from Kelvin to Celsius. 
we have assigned our material for solid we don't need to assign because we have only one solid material then we can move to the boundary condition inlet hot inlet which is uh, the kerosene oil so hot inlet uh, our fluid is entering let's say at 100 degrees celsius and at a velocity of 0 0.15 apply and close cold fluid is uh, entering at a temperature of uh, 25 let's say and momentum or velocity is of velocity of 0 0.1 the turbulence setting i am going to keep as it is i forgot one thing which i wanted to define this wall let's see if i can find this wall actually that should be wall this one let me display it is showing all those walls actually i wanted to define convection on those walls uh, i can go back to the nc smashing and define the this wall name as a convection then we can come back okay we are back to fluent and now let's set our wall boundary condition in the wall now we have this convection wall if i display you can see this wall and here i want to define my convection boundary condition so just double click here i want to have convection our free stream let's say it is at room temperature 20 degree and a heat transfer coefficient of 10 apply and close we have defined our boundary condition mesh interface we have two interfaces that's fine then method i want to use simple then in control i don't need to do anything report definition i would like to define two reports mass weighted average cold outlet temperature no report nothing and uh, that should be the temperature total temperature of the outlet cold if you don't know about port definition you can check out my video i have created a detailed video about that and then in the monitor residual i'm not changing butter floor i would like to have these two plots i guess that's it then i have to define number filtration and we can run our simulation it will take some time i will pause my video over here as soon as we will get some results i will come back and show you the results i had created this report so that i could monitor the outlet temperature of cold side and hot side this one is the cold outlet temperature and this one is the hot outlet temperature that's the benefit of report definition our simulation has nicely converged we can look at the results first let's check the temperature graphics contour and i would like to have the temperature total temperature of all these surfaces we can see the temperature is dropping quite a bit from inlet to the outlet you don't see the change in the color of the coal fluid because of the scale we can check the actual value of inlet and outlet for that go to the report and surface integral we want to see the mass weighted average let's see inlet temperature of both and outlet temperature of both go to the console uh, sorry we wanted to check the temperature compute the temperature of the cold fluid has increased by 8 degree and the temperature of the hot fluid has gone down by i don't know 52 53 degrees celsius 
we can see our uh, velocity profile or how our fluid is moving for that let's go to the path lines new and we want to create our path lines from inlet of both side first let's create by default okay that's how our velocity but it is not showing entire range let's uh, make it 3000 it is just to increase the density of this line so here is the velocity profile or how our fluid is moving inside for more detailed post processing you can look into this function or you can do in the CFD post one thing you should do as an exercise uh, I have shown you the outlet temperature and so inlet and outlet temperature you can check the energy balance from this temperature you know the flow rate that you can also get from here from flux mass flow rate at the inlet and outlet out from outlet and inlet it should be same you have mass flow rate you have inlet and outlet temperature you can do the energy balance and see the accuracy of this simulation that's it for today. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.